What's up, everybody? Welcome to the CFC DP YouTube channel. I'm here today to talk about the Man City match, uh, Juventus coming up, and I have an awesome guest, Libby, joining me. But first, we're going to play a short clip from Chelsea Look Back. This could be the most dramatic story of the season. It's Torres oh! to give Chelsea a place in the Champions League final. The headline has been written. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I said the last 18 months have just been forgotten in two seconds. And these, look at those Chelsea players, the bench. The manager, they're all on the pitch, they're jumping around like mad. It's gone absolutely wild. Stances, they've done it! It's a night Chelsea will never forget. One of the greatest moments in their history. They have triumphed here against the odds and against the team that's been called the best European football has ever seen. An absolutely awesome clip, one of my favorites of all time. Uh, so I'm going to bring Libby on now. Libby, I, I saw you kind of smiling in the on the bottom <laughs> there when you were watching that. Uh, Literally <laughs> instant goosebumps. Like, <laughs> I could not stop smiling at that. Everything about that moment was just unbelievable. Uh, it, like I said, like you said, goosebumps 100%. Um, and I thought with the Champions League, with probably our biggest – most important group stage match coming up at Juventus. I thought it was nice of Chelsea look back to put that recently on his YouTube. So I said, that's got to fit really well. Um, but Libby, uh, thank you for coming on as always. Uh, how are you thank doing? You for inviting me. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Not too bad. How are you? I am good. Um, still kind of recovering from that loss on uh, Saturday morning. It will well, afternoon over there, but morning for me. And it was actually just, it was a frustrating game to watch overall, I think. And yeah, that's the right word to use. For sure. It was like someone trying to put a, a square peg into a round hole over and over and over, over and over. And just, they didn't figure out what was the issue. And let's talk about the issues because I think that the very first issue is how we were set up. And I think it was an overcorrection. I think that it went so well against Spurs. Tuchel said, this is something that we can use against Man City. It's a little bit different. We're going to provide even more coverage by having, you know, another midfielder in there rather than another 10. Um, I, you know, it, to me, I think about it's a little bit 50-50 on is it the player's fault or is it Tuchel's fault? Where do you sit on that um, kind of thought? I think uh, I agree that it is down to a little bit of both. I think it's it's a it's a difficult one because on paper the, the tactics the tactics work for that particular game, and I think uh, I saw a lot of preferred 11s before the the build up, including my own. Uh, we a lot of people wanted to see that Georgie Covill and Kante in the midfield just to overrun and not allow. Uh, City to play and then hopefully we can use Kante and Kovacic to pick up any loose balls and then push push ourselves forward with, with those two but we literally did not see that at all like there was nothing uh, Kante was not Kante it seemed like it was weird to watch um, um, so in that sense I think some a part of it is down to the players um, a few of them had some below average games um mm -hmm. Kante being one of them um usually he's our secret weapon and picking up picking up any loose balls um he is the reason why we we're usually the the team that are very quick in the turn turnover of play when we go for defense to attack and he is our main reason of that um and I think Mason Mount was missing and he's also another reason why we are very good at turning over that play um and I think Alonso again had a not he didn't impress me again. I'm not gonna lie. Um, he had a great start to the season, but it seems like it's the same story as always that he just goes down to this average, below average sort of style of play. And I think now Juve will probably be 
the perfect time to reintroduce chili, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm 100 percent with you. You, uh, Alonzo always hits this little stretch, and it's always about this type of year, time of year, and it's right after everyone's like, "Oh wait, look at look what he's doing." Uh, is this is this the real Alonzo? Has he uh, has he become consistent? And and he is not. I think Man City also had a little bit to do with our their setup was fantastic. Their pressing in the first half was just it was fantastic. I mean, not for us, but just like if you're just watching the game as a neutral, you would say they stifled Chelsea so bad in that first half they couldn't make the simple passes how they do from the center backs you know, to the wing backs and then move it to the midfield. They couldn't do that. They really stopped Kovacic, Conte from carrying the ball out. And I think that's why Tuchel initially went with that setup because he's thinking, well, once we get it to those midfielders, they're going to be able to carry it out. Now you're starting a fast break opportunity with Timo and Lukaku. Um, you know, what, what did you think about Timo and Lukaku? I know that this is something that we've been waiting for for a little bit now. Um, we've seen it in like little 10 minute spurts, uh, Aston Villa and then Spurs for a little bit longer, but it's a one game and it's a small sample size, but do you, th- I mean, I think that they're going to go to it. Uh, there's a long, a long season, so they'll go to it eventually, but against one of the better teams in the league, is this something that we can do in the future? Do you think? Uh, I think it's, um, we were all so excited and we were all asking for literally the pairing of Timo and Lukaku because in theory their their abilities complement each other so well. Um, Lukaku's hold-up play, um, Timo's ability to, to drag defenders with his movements and his runs. Uh, honestly, the little things that Timo does are maybe overlooked sometimes and I do think he is really good at that. Um, and I think... We did not see that in this game at, at all, really. Um, it was disappointing after the, the big build-up of an excitement of wanting to see that pairing. Um, but whether that was their fault of the reason why they couldn't link up properly um, is, a, is a different question. I think they the midfield sort of, like failed to support them. Um, Lukaku held the ball up and then realised he has no one to lay it off to because there was no midfield support. So it, inevitably we lost the ball as soon as it went forward. And then Timo, Timo was um, was probably the only one that provided any kind of excitement within the game. I think he pushed us up the field really well. He pretty much on his own. There was like one time he was down he was down the wing and he was running. He took on he took on a defender. Then he stopped to have a look and realise he's completely alone. And then was like, okay, screw it, I'm going to carry on. <laughs> and then he carried on and he literally got to like the corner flag and was like, I'm still on my own because no one has busted a gut to come and support me. Um, so it's just one of those frustrating times when we're like, why normally cover Kovacic would be up there and Kante would also be up there as that as that third, making like a triangle um, within, within the attackers as that uh, sort of setback and then link up. Um, and it was just confusing of why that was not happening when we did have the opportunities. Very few, I'll give I'll give them that, but we did have some. So yeah, I just I think it was just kind of I think Tuchel in in the last twenty four or forty eight hours has received a lot of criticism for playing sort of like an anti football type of ta- you know approach in the first half, especially. And, you know, I I can't help but kind of join in that criticism. I mean, Chelsea do have a particular playing style where we do sit back, we do absorb pressure, and then we do take it to our advantage. But I think it was just a little bit too much in the first half of that because I talked about this on the preview stream with Jer and Patrick, and I said that I think Chelsea need to take the game to Manchester City a little bit. And, you know... I feel like people were a little weary because we have that system. We have that style. We are a counterattack team. That is when we have at least shown that we're more, more apt to score goals. But I think when you have a crowd behind you as well, I think that's something that needed to be taken into consideration that, well, you're playing Manchester city. If you sit back for, you know, a whole game, they're good to score. They're good. They're too good to not give up a goal. The Champions League, not saying it was an aberration, aberration, but Pep got his tactics wrong as well. So, 
you know, and everyone on the defense, there was probably three or four goal saving challenges that Chelsea had. So that game could have been very, very different. So we shouldn't use that game as a benchmark necessarily for how we have to play against great teams. Yes, we won the Champions League. Yes, we did this style against pretty much about against a bunch of great teams but every once in a while you need to be a fr- you know not be afraid to go out and be the aggressor because we have the players to do this yet i think i think mount being out was a little bit of a problem to be honest with you i think that kind of threw a wrench into what tuchel wanted to do potentially but when you have like mount Havertz, lukaku um timo you know ziesh pulisic cho you have guys that can play a possession style of football in the other team's half. It, it's just it, Tuchel's a great manager. Let me know. Let's not okay. discredit him for what all he's done. But I think in this sense, he needs to change. He needs to be more flexible because he did it in the second half. And now City scored the goal. Was we're City taking the foot off the uh, gas pedal a little bit potentially, but. Libby, we saw in the second half that Tuchel made that change and it immediately paid dividends. I mean, we didn't score, but in terms of play, I thought it was great. Yeah, I think uh, at halftime, it was that decision to be made of whether... So We knew that they would come out for about 10 minutes and carry on this very intense press because that's pretty much all that you would have left in your tanks. 10 minutes of intense press and whether the decision was whether to ride out that pressure as we are and then make the change or change the tactics to go at them instead. And in this instance, Tuchel did get it wrong. And I think he's the first man to be like, hold his hands up and say, I will look at myself. I ask questions of myself. I think that's what he said. Um, Because we know he's not afraid to make those halftime like subs to he he's made those difficult decisions before and the question is why didn't he do it this time um yeah but i think when we saw ruben come on um he instantly made an impact i was so impressed with him he played 15 minutes and i think he was our best player on that pitch besides mendy and maybe tiago um he was i i think i saw a stat actually that um I think Alex Goldberg posted it. Um, he, I saw a stat that Ruben, Ruben had an equal amount of ground jewels won as both mm-hmm. Georgie and Kante put together, and that is ridiculous. He he bettered both the UEFA award-winning midfielders, and I will not be surprised if he starts again at Juve. He's at least going to be featured, but if he starts, I will not be surprised. And he was fantastic. I mean. Yeah. When he came onto the pitch, he, you know, what I love about Ruben, to be honest with you, is he's just a different mold than our other midfielders. Because, you know, while he was playing sort of like a six, I think when he came on, his size and ability and footwork and ability to make defenders miss, I mean, it brought flashbacks. I was getting like weird, like PTSD. I'm like, oh my God, is this like really happening? Because he is so, he has such, God-given talent with his size and his ability and whatnot, if he can just keep a solid run of form together. And I like what Tuchel's doing, to be honest with you. I like that he says, well, you know what, Saul, you're not giving me the performances that we expected you to. We need to look at another option, and Ruben is that option right now. So, you know, kudos to Ruben for being able to do that. Um, but yeah, you couldn't say it better. I love wearing my Loftus cheek jersey. So, you know, <laughs> any chance I I think when he went in the game, I immediately put it on because I'm like, ah, let's go, Ruben. Um, no, but I just think that Tuchel was a little too defensive overall. I think that's kind of what it gets down to. Man City was very good and Tuchel was a little too defensive. And I think when you get, you know, when you get to that point. I, I think it is. And the goal they scored was it wasn't like a real tactical breakdown. It was a deflection. It, it was what it was. I mean, that game could have very been nil-nil at the end of it. Very well. But, you know, it happens. Things happen. Um, I, I'm not sweating on it too much. It helped that Liverpool and Man United both drop points also. So it was kind of like a, you know, a free pass type of deal. Um, and we I, still have a City versus Liverpool next week. So... Both of them will be dropping points to each other. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so as long as we can capitalize on situations like that and allow us to, you know, gain points on where others drop is, 
will be the most important thing. So I'm not I'm not really worried about this. It is what it is. It's a little bump in the road. I just want to be able to now pick ourselves back up, and that's that's all I want to see. You're 100 right, and we have to be honest. Until I think it's November, something something in November when we play Man United, we have a extremely favorable run of fixtures. So you run the table, you you know maybe you get a draw, a, a weird draw somewhere in, in there. But if you collect points in every game and they're mostly wins, you're going to be in great shape. It's going to be completely fine. Um, so we're going to move slightly to the Juventus game. Um, I know that's what we were supposed to do at the beginning, but I'm like, I have Libby on. She has great thoughts about the Man City game that I saw on Twitter. So let's get them out here. Um, so moving towards Juventus, um, do you think that Tuchel – because we do play like we already do kind of play like a hybrid three four three three five two, um, depending on who that uh, other guy up top is with uh, Lukaku. With you know, because if it's Mount, Mount pretty much already drops back into that other midfield role. Um, do you? I mean, but in terms of tactics, do you think that it's going to be different um, than Man City? Like, do you, where do you think Tuchel is going to make changes um, against Juventus? Because uh, you know, different league, different team, different playing style. Uh, you know, Chelsea seemed last year to thrive on in European competition playing against teams from other countries. So, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on uh, the tactics going into Juventus? Yeah, I definitely think we're going to be the team on top for this game against the struggling Juve. I think it'll be, we're definitely going to have more possession. Um, I don't think we'll do a 3 5 2 this game. I think we'll go back to the 3 4 3. Um, and I think there'll be some minor changes, maybe a slight rotation here and there. But otherwise, I would like to see us go out strong and capitalize on the fact that Juve are slightly looking slightly weaker than normal. They're struggling in the league. They're, what, like ninth in the league? Mm -hmm. um, so I do hope that we we don't, we don't un, like, uh, you know, think that it's going to be an easy ride but right. also i think we need to go in with all pretty much pretty much full power and and take it whilst we can take that top spot in the in the group um i don't see why we wouldn't do that yeah it, it's a perfect opportunity especially because uh dybala and Murata are going to be out um so what what this is probably the best case scenario for going to turin to play juventus um I expect a similarly strong lineup and a really, you know, foot on the gas pedal approach because it is a great opportunity to top the group. And how important is it going to be to be in first place and play a second place team when you get to the knockout rounds? I mean, it's basically put on a silver platter here. And to be honest with you, and this is kind of how I feel about like all of our cup competitions. I wish Chelsea would just kind of go up 2-0 you know, right away, because then it's like, oh, okay, now we can take Lukaku out. Uh, you know, it was just like such a bummer to have to put him on against Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup. Like, there's always that five, ten minute stretch after you score the first goal where the other team is flustered, they're shaky. You got to put it on them then. And that's one thing I wish Chelsea would do more is convert on those chances and just put a team out quickly. And I think that's what they're going to be trying to do against Juventus on uh wednesday because you know they're just in terrible form to be honest with you they're really having a tough time of it which you know it happens for all teams and especially you know with the holy ronaldo saga for them it, it was just a weird start to the season the new manager you know it was not good um you know, do you see anything? I don't know how much Juventus you've watched this year, but uh, without Dybala and Maranta, is there any concerns really you have? Um, you know, uh, maybe the atmosphere and just the travel, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the fact that it's a away game is always um, is always against us. And um, so they have their two, probably their two main threats. Um, they still have Chiesa and Quadrado. And I think, I imagine... Quadrado is going to play a little bit more forward instead of at a fullback. So they're going to put um, Dan Danilo back at, at um, right back, and then he's going to play probably right wing. Um, um, so I think they still have they still have the threats there to to punish us if we if we play like we did against Man City, they they will punish us. They have the capability to do that, but. Um, I think Tuchel is going to want to see a reaction after that game. 
then mm-hmm. he's going to want to see us playing at our best and basically playing with full confidence and belief. And if we play like that, I am I honestly don't see Juve causing us that many problems. Um, mm-hmm. And I think their, their defence has literally been incredibly leaky recently. Um, they conceded what, like, they've conceded in every league game so far and they conceded four in the last two against bottom half table teams. I, I feel like our attack, it should be a game where our attack has fun it, then thrive. That's that's what I want to see. Um, mm. So I'm hoping it will allow us to get that little bit of ruthlessness back within us. Um, but, you know, we, we have to come out, we have to come out the gate strong. We have to start the game strong because um, it's not going to be a walk in the park. No, and I think that that's a great point about starting games out strong because I think that's something that we've really been lacking thus far this season. It, it's not been a great first 45 for us at any point. And, you know, Chiesa, I, I, there has been a, a few, quite a few, like, little chirps on Twitter about his uh, him and Chelsea. I mean, would that be something that you'd be interested in? I, I think he's a heck of a player, and I think, he, you know, he's got plenty of talent to to be, you know, in the Premier League and to continue to be successful. I mean, what what are your thoughts on the guy? Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely like a like a little spark on the on the on the pitch. He's one of those players that produces like a little moment of magic that uh, mm. that sometimes you know if things aren't going your way, that's what you need. It's like uh, you know when Eden Hazard was with us and we we weren't playing our best, but when we put Eden Hazard on the ball, we we're like, yeah, we'll probably make something out of this because he's on the ball. Mm. One of those, one of those things. Um, so if he came to Chelsea, no, I would not be mad. <laughs> yeah, he's like, but to be honest, he's almost kind of like what Chelsea kind of misses a little bit, like in terms of like wing play. We we think you know Pulisic with his health, you know, he can sometimes be that little spark, as you mentioned. Cho doesn't really get the opportunity. He could be, um, but. Chiesa has a, a knack for scoring the big goal. I think every time I've watched him, he scored in the second half when the other team, when they need a goal. Um, he, he's fantastic. I have him on my ultimate team. I was up until 4 a.m. playing that last night. So I'm very familiar with him. He scored some big goals for me too last night. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I guess let's get to the lineups here. Um, in terms of your lineup, um, if you want, if you have a formation you'd like to give, you're more than welcome to. Uh, where do you think Chelsea line up uh, with against Juventus? Uh, I think we'll do a three four three. Um, I think it's going to be Mendy and goal, obvious reasons. Um, Mendy against City was unbelievable, um, and he really is partly what's made our defense so solid. He has saved. He literally saved us so many times. Um, then the back three of Rudy, Silva, and uh, Christensen. Again, completely solid. Um, the, you know, AC is just, I literally, watching him um, become the player that he is now has been unbelievable because I I was one of the persons, uh, people that had doubts about him last season, early, early last season. Um, so now watching him become this player has been so great. Um, fullbacks, I'm going to go with Chile and Aspi, simply because um, Chiesa and uh, to keep Chiesa quiet and Quadrado quiet, I would want Chile and Aspi. I considered Cho, but I think Aspi is the one that I'd go for. Um, in the middle, I've gone for Kovacic and Ruben. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want us to play with confidence and I think both of those players right now have been the most confident of our midfield and I think there is no reason why we can't start them play them together I think they could they could work really well together um with with their attributes if it doesn't work we can bring on Georgie to control the game you know he loves Italian football so it's probably his kind of game that he would play but Right now, within the form that they are, I don't see any reason why Kovacic and Ruben shouldn't get a shout. Mm-hmm. And then the three up front, I've gone Mount Lukaku and Havertz, which mm-hmm. I've gone for Havertz because um, you are quite vulnerable on set pieces and Havertz adds that height, so does Ruben. Um, it just adds that a little bit extra. Um, I can see a set piece goal coming, to be honest. Um, 
that's where I think we might have some success. Um, so yeah, but it's just sad on on um, on Werner because I don't really think he did a, he did put a foot wrong, and I think he was a bright spark in the City game. But I've yeah, I've just gone for Havertz this game just for that little bit of creativity. If Mason is still out, are you putting Timo in then? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's probably what I would do too. Yeah. Um, we have a very similar. Um, I have Mendy also in goal for the best reasons. He is fantastic. Talk about a guy that hasn't put a foot wrong. He has been absolutely sensational. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go a little bit different here. I think I'm going to go, um, uh, Christensen, Tiago. And I, I, I just kind of have a weird feeling that maybe, maybe Trevor Chalaba starts. I don't know why I have this feeling, but he has played very well this season. I, I don't think that any moment has been too big for him. I, I could see them trying to get Rudiger a little bit of rest, potentially, um, you know, looking up, up into the Southampton game. Um, and then, you know, I could see more rotation for the Southampton game. So you might want to put Rudiger in there to have some solidity back there. Um, so let's go AC, uh, Tiago, and Trev. Um, and like you said, I almost bought a Christian kit the other day because, like, yeah. he's been worth it, to be honest with you. He's been absolutely fantastic. And I really think when you look at, like, the effect that having, uh, you know, a Rudiger and Aspie and a Tiago Silva all in that defensive group, I think that's just done worlds for Christensen because he he does kind of have those same a little bit of – he's kind of like a mold of all of them. He has some of the same skills, and he's learned fantastic under them. Um, I have Chilwell and Aspie, though, as my wing backs. I think, like you said earlier in, in the show, that this is a perfect game for Chilwell to get, hey, man, you're back. This is it. Because I, I, I tweeted it during the game. I'm done with Alonzo. I just can't. I can't do it anymore. He, <laughs> and, you know, to be honest, and I know f- footballers, they look for fouls or whatever, but he is so, like, off balance when he runs. He's like a spinning top that's, like, about to, like, fall, you know, about to stop going. And he's, like, he could, can't believe that he's not getting these fouls called. And I'm like, dude, I would never give you a foul because you are so out of control when you're running. It looks like you fall over yourself every time, but that's just a personal thing that I've been looking at. Um, and then in the midfield, I went with uh, Ruben and Jorginho. I think, uh, as you mentioned, Ruben with his height for set pieces, I think Jorginho like playing against an Italian team kind of just fits. Um, and then I have the same front three, uh, Mason, Kai, and Lukaku. I think... I think the more game time that they get together, I think that is our best up top pairing. Um, you know, if Mason doesn't start, there's pro- to be honest, I think they might start Ziesh. You know, Ziesh, I don't like it, but Ziesh just seemingly always plays in the European like group stage games. So I think it might be something that um, might you might see Ziesh, um, but maybe Timo as well. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think they've had any reports. The press conference hasn't been happened yet about Mason's uh, injury status. So I think they just said they don't know yet. So it's a. But he did say before the city game that if the city game was one day later, then Mason would probably have been able to play. So I'm thinking he will be okay. But whether he'll actually risk him or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, and it may just be like a cameo appearance at the end of the game if we need him, um, potentially. Um, also interested to see if Pulisic will be fit. It's been quite a bit um, since he had his injury, and I think this is probably lining up in the timetable where we may see a cameo from him later in the game because I think, to be honest with you, you probably want him to maybe start against Southampton. I think that would be a great game for him to kind of get back into the swing of things, give some guys that you know are going to play big minutes in international break a little bit of a rest. And then now Pulisic, you start him against Southampton. He continues his form into the international break with the United States, continues to play, and is ready to go by the time he gets back. Um, Yeah, so... Well, we'll probably have that all wrong. That's what I say on all these ones. We don't, we never know, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think we will not be wrong about the top and the back. I think Mendy and Lukaku will start. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's at least what we've got. <laughs> Two out of eleven is pretty good. Um, so now for another thing that we'll probably be wrong about. What is your score prediction? I I'm hoping that we see pre-City Chelsea, so I'm going for like a 2-3-0 win. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. See, I'm going to go with – no, I'm going to go with three. I back us. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Three nil. I'm going to go with two nil. So you're going to be right regardless because you said two nil as well. So that – We'll, we'll both be right in that sense. I don't see Juventus scoring on us, to be honest with you. I just don't think that they're in form at all, um, you know, unless something weird happens, like a set piece or whatever. But, you know, we've been pretty good on set pieces too this season, to be real with you. we You know, that was kind of a bugaboo last year, but we've been pretty good on them this year, uh, knock on wood as of now. So, yeah, yeah any, other, any final thoughts you have on – kind of the direction Chelsea's heading, Man City, Juventus, uh, anything in like in that way? Um, not really. I just, I don't know. I just hope that we we do take this opportunity to take the top spot in the group. And I, I want to be serious about every competition that we're in, like you said before, like all the cup, all the cups. I want to be able to, to go out there and try and win them all. I know it's unrealistic, but, we technically could with the depth that we've got. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see what well, any reason. I don't want a, any game to be like, you know, let's use this as like a little experiment or you know. Um, so yeah, I just I wanna wanna carry on this season pre pre C. We'll yeah. <laughs> it like it almost needs to be like I don't know if you've seen Men in Black, but like you know when they hit them with the thing and they forget where the everything that's happened in the last ten minutes or whatever. Like if we could do that, that'd be fantastic. Because you know what, that I don't think that while the loss was kind of based on our identity, I, I think it was almost more of an overcorrection by Tuchel. I think Tuchel is such a top manager. I think he got it wrong that one day, and you're going against Pep and. For as many times as Tuchel has beaten Pep in the last year, we can't dis- we can't discredit him. Yeah, Pep. I mean Pep's got to get it right at least once, right? <laughs> exactly, and you know what? I'd rather have it in what is it the sixth match week of the season yeah. rather than a cup final. So I don't know if a lot of those City players <laughs> the one that counted, which was this one. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and like to be honest with you. There was quite a few uh, few city players acting like it was a cup final when they won. <laughs> I literally, I could not believe my eyes when I saw someone fall to their knees with their head in their hands. <laughs> and he like punches the ground. He's like, I yeah. Was, like, in shock. I'm like, I literally looked at my sister and I was like, is he serious? <laughs> like, we have six games in. Like, yeah. Oh my god, I saw that, and I think I laughed for like a good yeah, five I was, minutes. I was cracking up. But, uh, <laughs> some some people were were saying to me on Twitter like, if that was a Chelsea player, you would have supported him. I was like, no, I would have been embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I guess let them whatever enjoy their victory. It's. Yeah. It's whatever. Yeah, exactly. And that's not passing in any, any, uh, anywhere you look. So Libby, you know, awesome job. Thank you so much for coming on. You you. did it. You literally did an awesome job. I, I cannot wait to have you on again. Um, yeah. And if you want to follow Libby on Twitter, she is an awesome Twitter follow. It'll be, um, in the Twitter link as well. Um, but you can also look, in the description below, you'll be able to find her. Um, please follow her. Chelsea Look Back. Also subscribe to his channel. He does just awesome work finding the right clips at the right time to get you going. So please follow him. If you want to follow me up top, there is my handle. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, Libby, once again. Have a fantastic night. Yeah. You know, up the Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, thank you.